Alright guys, so I'm doing something a little different for this week's recap. I decided that I wanted to not only use my input, but I wanted to see what the input was of the public. So we've been going through these podcasts, listening to, uh, to what Paul Cantor has to say on this stuff. And now I want to ask some of the things that I've learned through the series, ask them to these people, random people, and see what they have to say about it. See if uh, these misconceptions that Paul Cantor has talked about are what people actually believe, <clears throat> or if, uh, if that's not really the case. So I'm going to find some people. I'm here in Lowe's. We're going to find some people to interview. Question, were you public school, private school, or homeschooled? Public school. Public school. And did you go to college or no college? College. A four-year degree? Yes. Or, okay. How much would you pay for something that you don't want? Not zero. I wouldn't even pay for anything <laughs> that I don't... I don't think I'd pay anything for it. Uh, nothing. Um, uh, nothing. I <laughs> So I asked everyone about their schooling background, not honestly because I really cared that much, but I figured asking some of these simple, easy to answer questions would make, get them comfortable in front of the camera. Then I asked kind of this silly question of how much would you pay for something that you don't want, just kind of to gauge the intellect of the people that I was talking to. As you saw, everyone at Lowe's seemed to pass the test, but as I went to McDonald's and Dick's Sporting Goods, a different story unfolded. Right. Five bucks. Five bucks for something that you don't want. Maybe ten. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars for something that you don't want. Yes. Okay. Next, I got into some of the questions that I was actually interested in asking these people. First one, should the government support the arts? A lot of what Cantor's been talking about has been the negative impact that the government has often had on the arts. The more the government involvement, often the more the arts suffer. But I wanted to see what the average person's perspective was on this. Okay, next question. Do you think that the government should support art or do you think that artists should have to support their own art? Sort of both. I don't know. <laughs> I think that they should support it in school. I think it should be more supported, more encouraged in schools. I think art is a very important part of people's life, you know, more so for other people than, you know, for everybody, basically. But, yeah. I think government should support that. Yes, should definitely, support most definitely, oh yeah. I think the artists ought to support themselves. No, government should support art. Um, I mean, I think that if they're like, good enough, like, the like people will support them. When you bring up the word government, often you're going to get some preconceived political views from people. So in the last question, I had quite a wide range of perspectives from different people. Now remember, Cantor helps us come to the realization that government support of the arts is basically saying that artists should have shielding from the market, that they shouldn't be under the pressure of supporting themselves and having to please the customer. Now, I wanted to get into, with my next question, more specifics on what creates the best art. And you'll be surprised that a lot of the answers start to become much more similar. Do you think that artists create better, um, you know, better art, or you know, this is like musicians, painters, all that kind of art? Do you think that they create better art when they're under pressure to, um, you know, please the customer or whatever? Or do you think that they produce better when they don't have that pressure? When they don't have that pressure, they produce better. Is what I believe. Probably better if they don't have the pressure. Probably when they're not under pressure. I would say no. They just when they do what they feel, it better represents themselves, and they do better work. No pressure. No pressure, better art. Yeah. That is, that yeah. is uh -huh. no okay. doubt in my mind. Yeah. About that one. <laughs> so almost every single person that I talk to, less pressure equals better art. But as I've been going through Cantor series, he's pointed out that some of the greatest art of history was created by these artists who are heavily involved commercially and in the market. So why then do so many people believe that less pressure equals better art? Well, perhaps it has to do with these people's perception of history and the people who created it. Do you picture people like Charles Dickens, Mozart, Beethoven, and all that? Do you picture them as artists who are, you know, you know, in their attic, kind of creating these masterpieces? Yes. Or do you picture them more as like involved with the market and commercial? Not commercial. Okay. The first one, yes. First. I'd say like alone in their attic. I think that art was their life and their passion, so uh -huh. I don't think they were. Uh huh marketing or advertising they were they were just creating you know and then turned out to be beautiful mm -hmm. no not commercialized or anything okay yeah kind of in their eyes. Right. addicts 
the first part of that. Okay, kind of in their attic. No, I really think they're in the attic trying to write all this stuff out. I see more up in the attic. I think they were just doing what they did, and if it sold, it sold. We so often picture these great artists from history as these starving artists, just barely able to make a living. And as the last lady said, they were just doing what they do and doing what they love. And if it sells, it sells. But after listening to Paul Cantor's series and looking at these artists' lives, it's clear to see that that's simply not the case. Shakespeare was the pop culture of his day. Mozart made six times what the average government official made and had the expensive house to prove it. Charles Dickens was the equivalent of a millionaire in his day. All of these artists were heavily involved in the market and trying to sell their work and just pleasing the customer. Whether it was because of or in spite of the pressure of having to support themselves, to say that, that the best art comes from less pressure is an invalid argument. And if some of the best art in history came from these artists who were under pressure from the market, who's to say that that pressure didn't actually help create some of the best art? Regardless of whether you believe that the government should support art or not, I challenge you to look at the history of art and see what circumstances created the best art. Could it be that government support of art actually suppresses quality instead of enhancing it? If you truly love art, Will you not seek for what creates the best art, not for what creates the easiest?